where we've got basketball this afternoon between the Baylor Bears and the Texas A&M Aggies. Let's take a look at the Baylor starting lineup for this game. It's a lineup they've been using basically all year. Kevin Shipman and uh, Aaron Bruce work out of the backcourt with Tommy Swanson in the middle, Tim Bush and Patrick Fields up front. The coach is Scott Drew in his second year at Baylor, 17 and 28. Overall, 37 and 39 in his third year as a head coach. His second year, of course, at, with the Bears. Now the starting lineup for the Texas A&M Aggies will also be one that has been very familiar all year. Antoine Wright and Chris Walker and Joseph Jones, along with A.C. Law and Dominique Kirk. Now, we list them with positions. But they don't officially do that here because Coach Billy Gillespie says they can play everywhere. And in many cases, that's true. Billy's 13-4 and four in his first year here, 43-36 and 36 in his third year overall as a head coach. He had a couple of years at the University of Texas, El Paso, after a long assistance a career, including uh, some time at Baylor. Now, the big guys we talked about before the game, Tommy Swanson, Joseph Jones, great numbers, Jim. Well, they have great numbers, and I think these two guys are going to go a long way in determining who wins today's game. The two centers, Tommy Swanson has to stay out of foul trouble for Baylor. Remember, Baylor only has six scholarship players available. Swanson has greatly improved over last year. He's now developed an outside shot. Joe Jones, I think he's definitely one of the top two or three freshmen in the Big 12 Conference. He's a big, strong, aggressive young man that can score down on the block very effectively. He's already a force in this league, one of the leading rebounders in the Big 12 Conference. These teams have met 189 times. This will be number 190, which is the second to most that Aggies have played anybody. Texas, they've played more. And the series is 118 and 71. That's AM. But you see that bottom line. Baylor's won four of the last five, including both games last year. The game here went right down to the wire in overtime. Baylor, of course, will be dressed in the uh, the dark uniforms. Their colors are green and gold, but the uniforms are actually black on your television screen. They are black with the green and gold trim, and the Aggies in the white. Well, Greg, this will be a game of contrast. Baylor wants to slow it down, speed it up. Talk about speed. <laughs> Antoine Wright takes it tough to the rack on the opening tip. Ball goes out of bounds. It will be retained by the Aggies and inbounded by A.C. Law, number one series of screens and picks and it turns out into a turnover but well, almost AC Law picks it up again. Well Baylor will gamble a lot out of their matchup zone defense. They're second in the Big 12 conference in steals. You'll see them try to use their quick hands often here this afternoon. That's relying on your guy behind you to cover up the zone. Jones gets it down low, runs into that double team, has it taken away for a moment, then picked back up by Law. He'll try his first shot of the game and bang it home. A nice job by A.C. Law getting the loose ball. Baylor coming close to creating two turnovers on the Aggies' first possession. Hard screen out back for Bruce. 18-footer in the lane, won't go down. Bush with the rebound, and he's fouled as he had that one in his hands. Well, you saw the maneuverability of Aaron Bruce there on the opening possession for Baylor splitting two Aggie defenders and then Tim Bush almost getting the finish on the follow. Kirk gets the foul. It'll be inbounded under the hoop by the Bears. Played less than a minute. It's 2-0 in favor. And on the, on the uh, inbounds play, Law trying to sneak through. is called for a foul. Watch this slick maneuver by Bruce right here, splitting the Aggie defenders. I told you he could handle the ball like a magician. He's a terrific talent from Australia. The only surprise on that play was that he actually missed the shot. He got himself wide open. Now he's got it back. Well, Greg, the Aggies have two quick fouls here. They lead the Big 12 in number of fouls committed. This start defensively for them should not be a surprise. AC Law will take out, won't take it. Well, that really hurt him in the recent game because they yeah, gave up too many free throws and lost. Yeah, in their last game Nebraska. against Nebraska, they committed 34 team fouls and four players fouled out. Jones never quits, never quits, and finally gets the basket. Joe Jones used his big, strong body in there, held his position well. Baylor did not get inside position. Little point about that Nebraska game, they, they had 18 fewer free throws made and they only lost by 10. And they were going against a team where fouling you would think would pay off because Nebraska was a very poor foul shooting team, but they shot well above their normal average, won the game. 
Aggies, of course, play this tight half court man to man at all times. Johnson has it blocked by Jones. Here come the Aggies on the attack right. Holds things up. Now Kirk. Jones takes his position down low. Kirk gets it back and a swing over to right. Three pointer. Yeah, Antoine Wright is on a hot streak for the Aggies. He hit four out of five threes in their last game against Nebraska. First seven points of the game go into the, oh, get that guy here. Go into the Aggie con column. It's seven to nothing with 17.56. Here's, uh, here's some of the ways that that seven point lead has been built. Well, watch right here inside. You're going to see Joe Jones right there. He gets inside position and just stays after it. That's one flaw in a zone defense. You don't have a man assigned to block out. Good start for the big freshman for the Aggies. On the other side of things, why not attack from outside if the zone's sagging in? Antoine Wright, their very talented junior, their leading scorer, buries one from the right baseline. He's a deadly long-range shooter, 44%, averaging 17.3 points a game, had 24 in the game against Oklahoma. And in fact, he's been on a roll of averaging about over the last five games, about a couple points more than that overall average. Now, Baylor will face a little bit of pressure on the inbounds play, down by seven with 17.56 to go here in the first half. Well, you can expect more and more ball clubs to extend the pressure against Baylor with only six scholarship players. They'll all try to wear them out early. Bad pass intercepted, and then a blocking foul will be called on Baylor Bruce as he tried to make up for the fact that he swung a pass right into a passing lane. Well, he's normally a very sure passer, that time taking the risk against this in-your-face, play-the-passing-lane Texas Aggie defense. First team foul inbound by Wright, and he'll give it in to uh, A.C. Law. A.C. Law, the fourth out of Dallas, a sophomore, averaging 13.4 points, and it, more impressively, 4.9 assists. That's third best in the Big 12. He won't get one there as that ball uh, went off the hands of Wright, who slipped. Aggie's first turnover of the day. Baylor needs badly to come down and convert now. They had trouble in their last game against Kansas, scoring early in the ball game, dug themselves a big hole, and caused lots of problems. In contrast to their conference victory over Colorado, they started out with an 18 to 1 advantage. So officials out there trying to find moisture on the floor, and they just couldn't find any. They looked. <laughs> Billy Gillespie said, go down there and check, because why would our guys have fallen down like that? <laughs> Fisher probably came back and said, look, you're court. <laughs> you ought to know. <laughs> Here's Fields. Baylor spreading the floor. And Beautiful. a great cut to the basket and pass. Yeah, Bruce right there. Everybody talks about his ability with the ball. That time, movement without the ball. Good job by Bright Baylor spreading the floor. Oh, my goodness, Technical coach. foul uh, on Billy Gillespie. Yeah, Kelly Self calling the early tee on the Texas Aggie coach. I have no idea what that could be about so early unless he was uh, still upset about uh, Antoine Wright slipping down there in front of the Baylor bench. Well, either the floor or he made some wisecrack at the point, like saying, well, either the floor is wet or he got pushed. Well, and officials wouldn't like that alternative. <laughs> and Bruce, Aaron who, Bruce is the conference's <laughs> leading free throw shooter. Well, he was. <laughs> he may not be now. He'll get one more. Well, he hits a phenomenal 89% of his free throw oh, attempts. That's the first time this year he's missed two in a row. That's incredible. Now, take a look now. Watch Aaron Bruce now. After he passes the ball to the left down here, he's going to break hard to the bucket. Take a look right here. Aaron Bruce moving without the basketball. Nice break. Aggie's got caught standing flat-footed there. 7-2. Aggie's had the ball in the lead. Law with it. Looking into Jones and went to right instead. Now back out top of the wall. Good ball movement. A nice job by Tommy Swanson of Baylor fronting Joe Jones in there. The Aggies 6'9", 260 pounder. Kirk on the offensive foul on the pass off. Who, who drew that charge right there? Good team defense by Baylor. Good rotation on the baseline penetration by the Aggies. That's the second foul on Kirk. 
Now Baylor will inbound again. Kirk fouled out in the Aggies' last game against Nebraska. Biggers has entered the game. Roscoe Biggers, number three for Baylor. Fields over to Swanson. Swanson's out of his range here normally and gives it off to Biggers to try to work to the baseline. And as he threw it out to Swanson, there was a whistle yep, and a turnabout. foul on him. Yep, turnabout's fair play here. Aggies drew the charge on the baseline on their last possession. Biggers doing the same thing for the Baylor Bears. Nice job by Walker coming across the paint, drawing the charge. He leads the Texas A&M team in charges drawn this year. Baylor in a token 2-2-1 zone trapping defense. Move back into their customary matchup zone. Right, dumps it down inside to Jones. His turnaround shot is there. That's where you want to try to get the basketball into the middle against the zone defense. Joe Jones, of course, much bigger than any player Baylor can put on the floor physically. Point lead, that equals the largest. Bush makes a maneuver, gets it out the fields behind the line, and he bubbles it home. A three-pointer for Fields. The field, fields averages 11 points per game, fourth leading score for the Baylor Bears. That was a terrific kick out by Tim Bush, the very strong, physical 6'6 forward for Baylor. Not a normally good three-point shooter at only 27%, but he hit that one, and it's 9-5. to five. Oh, Right now, the Aggies are being very patient, and away from the basketball, we have Walker, it looks like. That's who they're pointing at. Personal foul against the Aggies. And we got a timeout, 13th foul, we'll take a break. Aggies lead it 9-5 to five with 15.31 to go in the first half. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot fry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. Grayford, Texas, November 23rd, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. Don't give it back to him. Nice. Oh, you gotta call that. With up to 40 NBA games a week, news, stats, and highlights. Nice. NBA nice. League Pass from DirecTV is heaven. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS today. Brace yourself for the NFL playoffs at Super Bowl 39 in crystal clear, high definition. Yes. the time to join DirecTV's HD Revolution. Because this postseason, the Revolution will be televised. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Aggie band for basketball. Their team's on top 9-5. to five. We got another nice crowd here. They've been setting records. Four of the top uh, crowds of all time have been set this year. And uh, no, the last this time will be the biggest for a Baylor game, I can guarantee you. Oh, for you. sure. And the last time you and I were here, it was overflowed standing room only for that Texas game a couple of weeks ago. But in fact, that was won. the record. They set the record in that one. Remember the first year this uh, building was open, they didn't have seats on the end that they had set up. And uh, it always looked a little empty on that end. And they've made it much more intimate. And they're hanging some curtains on the lower levels. And it's a great basketball play. Aaron Bruce back on the court for the Baylor Bears now. Bush sneaks inside, and he is fouled by Walker, who tried to stop him, and Walker's got a couple. So Walker has two. Kirk has two. Well, Greg, talking to Coach Billy Gillespie at their game day workout this morning, he emphasized the fact that he had to get his team out of fouling so much on the half court. He said it really cost him the Nebraska game up in Lincoln earlier this week, and he said something has got to be done, and... And they've got a lot of young players with inexperience. 16 uh, fouls already. Marlon Pompey has entered the game for Walker. Swanson takes the pass. Oh, 
Now Pompey is a terrific defensive player. Bruce can't continue on. Uh, Bush thought, thought. Now goes in a little closer, rolls it off, and the rebound comes down to Jones. Jones out the law, law loops it down court. But no finish there by uh, That was Wright. a great move by Bush. He did the hard part, didn't get the easy part. All he had to do was lay it up lightly off the glass, but got a little excited. And too much oomph on that layup. Right back out the law, the swing around to Kirk. They're going to reset the clock. That one was kicked. You know, what we're seeing them do, Jim, they're, they're passing the ball, but they're passing without gaining any advantage with each pass. They're not standing there. They're not really gaining anything. Now they've got to try another well, 35 seconds. They're, they're still feeling out this uh, Baylor zone defense that's just a little bit different than most of them you'll see in the Big 12 Conference. Not only do they match it up, but they will change their alignment from time to time to start it out. They got it where they wanted to. That was a tough shot, though, and Jones couldn't get it down. Here comes Biggers. Bush, a little short, and Law on the rebound, and a foul on the rebound. This may be on the Aggies again. This will be on 42. The guy who just came in, Marlon Pompey. Greg, if Baylor's going to have a chance to win this game today, they've got to start knocking down some perimeter three-pointers. Tim Bush was a good outside shooter for Baylor earlier in the season, but in the last three games, Tim Bush is one for 13 from the three-point line. Now after that miss, he's one out of his last 14 attempts. Baylor, uh, Greg Baylor is the second leading three-point shooting team in the league. They're going to have to get hot from out there today. Swanson gets one and one. We have played, well, he doesn't get the first one down, so it matters little, the rebound of the Aggies. But we've played less than six minutes. And Baylor's already shooting free throws. Nine five, they're down. Jones. Dumps it down to Pompey, and now he is fouled. Well, there, I think we may be here a while. This one will be on uh, Baylor's 32 Swanson. Well, this is a veteran crew. We've got Scott Thornley, Tom O'Neill, and Kerry Self. So all these striped shirts have been around a while, but calling it extremely close here this afternoon. I don't like it, but as long as they call it evenly on both ends, that's all the coaches ask for. Paul swings it again. Looking from the top. Pompey on the baseline. Wanted to go into Jones. Did, but it was a little bit late. Jones saved it, but he was sitting on the end line, and so it's going to turn over to Baylor. See, that's that's the point. They've gotten it into him a couple times, but he's really not been in a spot for a high percentage shot. Just getting it there isn't always enough. Well, they've got it there enough that Jones has four of their nine points, but you're right. They've got to get it through quicker in a better position. Bruce for three. Now that guy. Now he's one of the top three-point shooters in the Big 12 Conference right there showing why. And that's a good indicator of what the Bears have to do, as I said earlier, if they want to pull the upset here this afternoon. That'll work. Well, it normally would work, but Wright couldn't get it finished because the big hand was up there. And the bottom of the backboard. It's 9-8. Baylor has a chance to take the lead for the first time. Biggers. Bruce back to Biggers. Bigger's going to try to reset it. They've got 18 seconds on the shot clock. Law's right with him. Fields. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Bruce, a running one-hander, leaves it short. He had to beat the clock. And the rebound to Baylor. Saved over the line. Biggers has it. Has to battle off right. 27 on the shot clock, so plenty of time for Baylor. Again, trying to take the lead for the first time. Bruce. Well, they always want to get the ball in the hands of Bruce on every possession. He's the guy that makes it happen for the Bears. He dumped it over to Swanson, but he couldn't reach it. Turns into a turnover. Here comes Kirk. Lead back to Law. is open for three and buries it. Well, nice job by A.C. Law finding the open spot in that transition opportunity. Texas A&M is a good running ball club. Nice finish there for A.C. Law on the three-pointer. Bush, Biggers, Bruce, Swanson, and Fields make up the Baylor offense here. Down by 12-8. 11.52 to go in the first half. Both 
teams are playing a very sticky, tough defense. The Aggies have fouled too much, but they've been tough when they haven't. And there's another example of it. But Baylor picks up the ball. Swanson with a little eight-footer. Can't get it. A rebound comes down to right. Well, that was terrific agility by Tommy Swanson that time. By far the largest Baylor bear at 10. Kirk misses the early opportunity three. Jones battles for the boards. It popped out of bounds, and a foul will be called on Biggers. Well, you like to, you've got to like the aggressiveness of this big freshman for the Texas Aggies, Joe Jones from the tiny town of Normandy, right near College Station. We will take a break as we watch AC Law, part of the reason why the Aggies lead by four with 11.27 to go in the first half. Dealers starting the year off big with zero plus. Grab Ram 1500 to get zero percent financing plus bonus cash of two thousand dollars for total savings up to seventy one hundred dollars. That includes the Lone Star Edition with big twenty inch wheels and big power thanks to an available three hundred and forty five horsepower Hemi, making it the most powerful truck in its class. Grab zero plus only at your Texas Dodge dealer. Relive Dallas Stars history with the ultimate Dallas Stars collection. This week, we revisit the Stars taking on the Carolina Hurricanes from February 11, 2003. It's a game that had everything. East versus West. Very physical matchups. And Madonna playing his 1,000th career game. Not to mention some incredible goals, including the final second shot in OT that clinches a win for the Stars. The ultimate Dallas Stars collection. Monday at 7 on FM. In Southwest. Five out of five doctors recommend helmets for their patients with heads. Unless you are without a head, always wear a helmet. Some people don't have heads. Headless wonders. Very rare and not very popular with the ladies. Talk to your head doctor about a helmet today. Aggies lead it by four, but uh, Baylor is hanging in. One thing Baylor has done all year is move well without the ball. And this is a great example, Jim. Well, Aaron Bruce right here has five of Baylor's eight points. Remember, some basketball players have great memories. The last time Aaron Bruce scored, he cut hard to the bucket. Watch what happens this time. The Texas Aggie defender right here is going to drop off quickly. Watch this. Aaron Bruce says, uh-oh, he remembers what I did last time. Bruce pops outside of the three-point line. Nothing but net for the little freshman from Australia. Well, nation's leading scorer, freshman, he's number two behind uh, Tony Douglas of Auburn. And he has uh, really been impressive more and more with every game. Jones hits the first three, but Joseph now with five points. Well, we're fortunate to see two of the top freshmen, not only in the Big 12, but in the country here this afternoon. Joe Jones getting lots of accolades nationally for being the freshman center for the Aggies. Aaron Bruce likewise is the lead guard for the Baylor Bears. Aggies lead is back up to six. It was seven on two occasions. Bruce with the ball off to Swanson. Swanson has a little bit of room down the lane and runs into a charge. Up travel first, no, no charge. Now, Tom O'Neill called the travel, Kerry Self called the charge, but O'Neill made the call first. A break Pompey's right there for it. Baylor. They certainly can't afford to have Tommy Swanson in foul trouble. Yeah. Uh, he, did, he, he shuffled his feet. I'm not sure which was there. first. <laughs> he'll, he'll take well, the Well, Baylor's charge. happy that he yeah. did skip. He'll, he'll take the charge. <laughs> the Aggies would like it's, to have him for the foul. Yeah, he'd rather have the uh, turnover. Right. into the game, the veteran from Philadelphia. Walk on for Baylor number 22, Richard Hurd in the lineup now. Right for three, that's a little short, but kept alive. Leach will try to track it down and does. That's a nice job by Marlon Pompey, slapping the ball outside then. Wright doesn't take the three this time. They're always looking to Jones. Can't get it to him right now though. Leach, the first look goes in there because he's the closest and he's the biggest. He on the shot clock. Leach is going to move his way in himself and hit a little eight footer. Nice offensive aggressiveness by Bobby Leach. He's been on a hot streak lately. Last five games, he scored at least nine points in each of them. Bush on the very 
High post, hands it off to Bruce, running one-hander. That's the thing that you'll see when you watch Bruce. He squares up in mid-air and is able to hit a lot of shots uh, that was not really he squared loves, up before he leaves the feet. Greg, as you saw right there, he loves to go to the left with that quick bounce and then take the jump shot. I'm sure Billy Gillespie and his staff went over that move in their pre-game preparation. I think Jones uh, got this one. It was a wrestling match, and Joseph Jones picks up the foul. Coming up tonight at 10, it's the Bush Light Southwest Sports Report. All the big stories of the day will be covered. You can catch the, including the Hornets Spurs uh, recap, 76ers play the Mets, and complete NCAA story. That's the Bush Light Sports Report tonight only on FSN Southwest. Shepard has come into the game. Now Mark Shepard is a walk-on freshman from Austin, Texas. He's been very valuable for Baylor this year. They have no size other than Swanson, but with Swanson and Shepard both on the floor, he increases Baylor's rebounding ability greatly. And there's a rare sight, Kevin Shipman cutting loose with a shot, but he did. Doesn't shoot a whole lot. His average is 6.6, which actually has been dropping since uh, over the last couple of games. Well, against Kansas, he came in, Greg, and hit three out of three three-point shots for Baylor. So he's got his confidence flowing right now. Law from outside the line. He hits. So does A.C. Law have his confidence going right now. Shipman didn't get out quick enough on him. Just a trade out there on Trey Balls. 19-13. Here's Fields. Fields will try a three. That's going to be a little bit off right. And the rebound of A.C. Law. Law with a long court pass. Right up. And has it blocked right to Leach who scores. Actually, I think Leach wanted that ball originally himself. He thought the pass was coming to him. Well, he ends up getting the points. A nice job by Texas A&M making the long tall pass up the floor. Good court awareness for the Aggies to see Wright streaking down the floor after the long Baylor shot. 8-14 left in the half, 21-13. Aggies fields with the basketball, guarded by Wright. There's Bruce, hanging it up. Double clutch, scores, and he's fouled. Now that was a dandy play. Well, Aaron Bruce can do all kinds of things. We're seeing a good exhibition here this afternoon. There he shot a floater, actually moving toward the bucket as he let loose with the round ball. Nice conversion for the freshman. Great he is really a terrific talent. He's going to be so much fun to watch as he continues to mature and get just a little bit physically stronger in his years as a Baylor Bear. He's already scored 10 points here in the half uh, in his uh, brief career. His career high is 24 points. Well, he had 23 Wednesday night against a tough University of Kansas team. 21-16, five-point Aggie lead with 7.49 to go in the first half. Kansas, of course, is one of two Big 12 teams still under league play. Law on the miss, and Shepard and Jones on the battle, and I think Shepard was on the back, and I think he's going to get the foul call. Nice block out by Jones as Shepard did go to the offense. Tip. It was the fifth team foul, but before anything uh, transpires, the ball put in play, we'll have a break. As the action has been hot, 21-16, 7.41 to go, first half. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot pry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. Grayford, Texas, November 23rd, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. I'm a four-truck man, that's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries, I don't compromise. And neither do Texans. That's why they've made Ford F-150 their number one choice 28 years running. 
You can't beat number one, brother. And you can't beat this great offer from your Texas Ford dealer. Get up to 3,000 cash back on a new 2005 F-150. Ford trucks are the best, hands down. To get your hands on a new F-150, head down today and find out why. Ford is the best in Texas. technology have to be so difficult? At CompUSA, we make technology easy. Easy to get, easy to use. CompUSA, you're on. 21-16, A&M leads Baylor. You know, in baseball, if you throw a trick pitch like a knuckleball, you can be pretty successful. It's very unusual. In basketball, if you shoot a knuckleball to be successful, AC Law does that quite a bit. He's pretty successful. Well, I wonder if he ever watched Charlie Huff, but watch this ball. Look at this right here. You see no rotation on those seams. That is incredible that AC Law can be that effective without any backspin. Now, let me tell you how that happened. When he was in the 10th grade, he broke his wrist. He said ever since then, he has not been able to get any rotation on his basketball, but unbelievably enough, he's become an even better shooter. That's what's amazing because you can't use wrist action. If you can't use wrist action, it's very unusual to be a good shooter. But he is adapted, obviously. You can see Baylor taking the swat at the ball from behind there. Tim Bush almost created another turnover for the Bears. I repeat, they're the second leading team in the league in steals. They take lots of chances out of their zone defense. Can Shepard get to it? Well, he can, but that was, well, he paid, paid off. It's risky under the other team's basket. But A nice hustle by Mark Shepard. He knew he was throwing it far enough out that if they egg, did get it, they wouldn't have their easy putback. Fields. Now gets it in the hands of Bruce. Absolutely. Every game. time Baylor wants the ball to be in the hands of Aaron Bruce on each possession. You have to give it up to Shepard. Shepard tracks it down. Back to Bruce. The three's on the way. That's not there. Shepard got a hand on it, but Jones with a rebound. Here come the Aggies. Leach, and he may have traveled. When he yep. did the behind-the-back move, the official said, no, nah, you carried it. Billy Gillespie says that was just a good move. Well, Billy Gillespie knows he's already got one technical. He sure doesn't want to fuss too much, but we've got a good look at it. There definitely was on the crossover two or three extra steps taken, never in control. So Aaron Bruce will bring it back across the line. Bush, Swanson has it knocked loose in the lane by right, then he comes up with a left hand and pops it home. Swanson with his first basket. What a terrific job of dexterity right there by Tommy Swanson. Moved that ball from the right hand to the left hand, kissed it off the glass, bringing Baylor within three points of the Texas Aggies. Ooh, they tried to go for the passing lane there, and that one just barely got the law off the right. Leach for three. Bobby Leach. Bobby Leach has really come along. Seven points off the bench in this game. A nice ball movement by the Aggies. They know Baylor is concentrating on stopping the entry passes to the low post. That will leave the outside shot open. That's the way to defeat Baylor. Kansas hit 16 of those Wednesday night. Fields leaves it a little short, gets it back, doesn't leave that one short. So Bruce left the first one short. He now has one, two, three, four, five field goals. One of them is a three. And he scored 12. Middle tennis, middle eight, beat. Law with a basketball. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half. Aggies by four. Right. Jones a little short. Long rebound is going to be taken and out of bounds. So it will still be the Aggies ball. We'll have a chance to take a look at the last Aggie basket. You can look to the left wing and you will see the Aggies knock this down. I can't remember if this is the man that, yeah, right here, comes up, moves a little tighter to the bucket and drills nothing but net. Nice court awareness by Texas A&M. Good ball movement, knowing that Baylor is stopping the pass to the block. And gets it back out the law. They're working with a full shot clock, right? Leach has been the man open so far with those seven points. Law, paying attention to him on top. 
Good job by Kevin Shipman for Baylor there, stopping the penetration of AC Law. Leach, what a swing around, pass inside, the follow by right won't go. He had two cracks at it, hit by a third, and he is fouled. Great swing around pass to start that play by Leach, and then Wright just stayed with it. Yeah, they put Bobby Leach at the point, moved AC Law over to the wing, and Leach made the nice penetrating move. Take a look at this nice job by Bobby Leach. Finds a wide open Antoine Wright under the bucket. Just could not get the finish on the first one or the second one, but he stayed after it. This youngster's got great leaping ability and the long arms to get the offensive retrievals. He'll have one more shot. That was a six-team foul, so... Roscoe Biggers coming back into the game for Baylor in place of Aaron Bruce. Bruce plays so hard, they've got to give him a blow every now and then. And Juan Wright bringing the Aggie advantage back to six. And the Aggies uh, make a change. Coming back in is Dominique Kirk. Leach goes off, and he should get a... Nice pat on the back as he passes his head coach because he did a great job off the bench. 26-20 with 4.47 to go in the first half. The Yankees have it. The Bears and Baylor have the ball. And the ball is knocked out of bounds. It will still be Baylor's basketball with 24 on the shot clock. They'll inbound, inbound it under the hole here. Just to the left. Bush pops out. Bush makes a move around Walker, then dishes off. But nice That's a three. That'll be counting for three for Fields, his second three. Now he hit his first three-pointer from the left baseline, knocks this one down from the right baseline, both times on very nice penetrating moves and kickouts by Tim Bush, the big 6'6", 235-pounder for the Baylor Bears. Foul was called on the Shipman, his first team seventh, however, and the Law will be at the line for the bonus. Now, here's an interesting story. A.C. Law played for Dallas Kimball. Patrick Fields, who just knocked down the last basket, basket for the Baylor Bears, played at San Antonio J. They played against each other in the state championship game in Austin several years back. And another three ball, Shipman. His second. Now they're getting some points. As you said earlier, Shipman uh, found himself a little bit in his last game out, and he had been in a bit of a scoring slump. In fact, he wasn't even getting a whole lot of minutes after starting games. But well, Baylor now showing why they're the second leading three-point shooting team in the Big 12 Conference. The 26-26 tie does not last long as a nice dish off inside goes to Jones, and he draws the foul. The last time it was Bobby Leach on the penetrating move for the easy dump down to the block. This time A.C. Law does it for the Texas Aggies. Nice dish by A.C. Law. Nice finish by Joe Jones. A free throw coming. We'll be back. This just might be my favorite sandwich, the Brahms Bacon Cheeseburger. And it's no wonder. A big one-third pound, 100% pure beef homestyle patty. Lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, and over a full ounce of real cheese. We top it with Brahms' specially seasoned hickory smoked bacon and serve it on a sesame seed bun baked fresh from Brahms' bakery. Mmm. Looks good, doesn't it? Brahms makes everything better. Some people prefer the functionality of the element. Some prefer the rugged versatility of the CRV. Others just like the room and power of the eight passenger pilot. But all three are leaders in their class for fuel economy and have been rated an excellent value. So, no matter which one you choose, it'll be the right choice. The CRV, the Pilot, the Element from Honda. Now you can lease a Honda Pilot EX for $279 a month. I'm embarrassed for you. I really am. I mean, three times in a row, you'd think it was a statistical impossibility or something. If Yao were here, he'd just... Whoa, 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 where are you putting that thing? Guess that basketball camp really worked out for you, huh? Well, uh, you've mastered that shot. The Southwest Sports Report is kicking off National Signing Day coverage Monday night. Martellus Bennett is one of the nation's top recruits, and he is going to announce his commitment Monday night at 10. 
on the Bush Light Southwest Sports Report. Then Tuesday night, you can join Inside Southwest Recruiting as they preview National Signing Day and wrap it all up Wednesday night at 6 with the Signing Day Wrap-Up Show. So if you want to know where some of the top players are going and which schools are going to acquire them, FSN Southwest is the place to be. That uh, foul uh, was on Fields, his first, and Jones will be at the free throw line now trying to complete a three-point play. He has eight points. And make it nine. Uh, Joe Jones has five double-doubles on the season. One of those coming in the big upset against the Texas Longhorns a couple of weeks ago. Outstanding freshman. I'd say there are pretty good chance he's going to have another one today because he's already got six rebounds to go with those uh, nine points. And we're not at halftime yet. 29-26, three-point lead for the Aggies. Biggers working the ball. Well, obviously, Baylor a different team without Aaron Bruce on the floor. Shot clock down to eight already. Long three. Oh, my goodness. Shipman hits his third three. Well, Shipman did that against Kansas Wednesday night. I mentioned earlier, hit three in a row against the league-leading Jayhawks. Doing it again here at Reed Arena this afternoon. A youngster from Dallas Lincoln High School showing his stuff against his old rival from Dallas Kimball, AC Law. That's two uh, threes in a row that have tied the game. Now let's see if it uh, if it holds. Leach loops it over to Law. Well, Law, nope, not this time. Long rebound comes out to Shipman. Shipman's got a doesn't have numbers, so he's going to pull it back. And he finds it into Ship to uh, Swanson. It's deflected, finally picked up, and a whistle. Wow. Picked up finally by Fields, and as he tried to the basket, there was a whistle. Well, when you got that hot feeling, you just keep it going. Kevin Shipman, the transfer from Tyler Junior College by way of Dallas Lincoln, had a hand in his face. He said, what difference does that make? I'm hot. I'm shooting it. And he does it. Now has nine points here this afternoon to be the Bears' second leading scorer behind Aaron Bruce. And a two-shot to situation here the Bears have not shot many free throws but they've only hit one yeah one out of five now Greg and when you're on the road you've got to knock those down and what's ironic Baylor's the third leading free throw shooting team in the conference hitting it a 75 percent clip in Big 12 play one more for Fields There's not any give up in this Baylor Bear ball club. They may get down, but as you can see here this afternoon, they continue to fight hard. Scott Drew and his staff doing a terrific job of motivating and keeping their team moving and very active. Billy Gillespie's ball club, second in, in the Big 12 Conference defensively, but have their hands full here this afternoon with a hot shooting Baylor team. First Baylor lead of one point, and it goes off the hands out of bounds. Baylor will have a chance to improve that lead as Edwan Green entered the game and couldn't handle that bullet pass. As Gillespie looks on, and his team in danger of falling behind by three with 2.20 to go here in the half. Bruce. Gives it off to Bush. We haven't heard much from Bush. They have nothing on the scoreboard yet. He is a definite scoring threat. Number two score on the club. Ball knocked out of bounds. It will still be Baylor's basketball with 23 on the shot clock. Tim Bush averages 14 points per 15 points per game, but no easy looks here so far this afternoon. Baylor spreading the floor now in a four across look on the out of bounds play. Shepard, Fields, tries to make a spin move, tried to give it outside, ran into a problem, and Law with the interception. Law cuts to the basket, goes up right-handed, scores, and is fouled. A great defense by A.C. Law, but an even greater finish right there, taking the ball the length of the floor, cutting across the paint for the layup for the Texas Aggies. He flashed that jet quickness that he has, jumping in the passing lane there for Texas A&M as the Bears were trying to get the ball in the hands of Aaron Bruce. Something else he did, and I think uh, it's happened a couple times in this game already, and this is an instructional note to young players. Twice we've had baskets from players using their other hand, and that was one of them. You learn to use that other hand, at least in close. Thirty-two thirty with a minute thirty, another fifty to go in the first half. 
Good floor game here so far this afternoon by Baylor. They only have four turnovers. Aggies have seven. They're both teams playing relatively well in an, in an aggressive defensive matchup so far. Maybe Bush this time. Yes, Bush. That's a three. Well, Bush had only made one of his last 14, but those don't make any difference with one and a half minutes to go here in the first half. He drains it to put Baylor back up. Second one-point lead for the Bears. Law with the ball. Wright, that's another guy that we haven't really heard much from. He has five points. And uh, scores tend to gravitate toward their averages eventually. Here's Leach. We've heard a lot from Leach. Leach off the bench with his fourth field goal. Nine points in the half, 34-33, back on top, a &M. Both ball clubs shooting over 50%. Nifty inside pass, but Swanson going up left-handed, couldn't get it to fall, and now Law comes back on the attack. He runs up another one right-handed uh, shot, and another right-handed shot, a little ridiculous now. Right with a final shot in close, and a whistle, his bodies are laying all over the court. And a foul will be called on the Aggies. And we're going to go the other end of the court. We've got to mop some up. Well, maybe not. Let's take a look at it again. There's the right-handed attempt. And then another right-handed attempt. Bodies all over the floor. Right goes in, and that's the call right there. It's on right. 34 seconds to go. And Bruce pops in another short jumper, 35-34, another one-point lead, and a 30-second timeout called by Texas A&M. Bruce here in the first half, 14 points. He has a couple of assists. The leading scorer on the other side uh, is A.C. Law with 11 points, nine points for Leach off the bench, nine points and seven rebounds for Jones uh, on the Aggie side. So we've had some good, good play both ways. And both teams shooting well, nearly 50 or over 50%. Coming this February, NASCAR on Fox returns with the biggest event of all racing. It's the Daytona 500. The world's best drivers go bumper to bumper, kicking off 15 weeks of NASCAR coverage. It's the 47th running of the Daytona 500 this February in high definition only on Fox. 13 for 24 shooting for Baylor, that's 54%. 12 for 25 for the Aggies, 48%. 7 for 10 from three-point range. That's the big story. Baylor, 7 for 10. The Aggies are shooting them well enough. Not as many, 4 out of 8. Rebounds, it's uh, really one-sided. The Aggies have 18 to 8 advantage. But, down by a point. Aggies with the basketball with 22 seconds. They'll go for the final shot here in the first half. Leach wants Law to come out. They're down to 12 seconds, as you can see on the screen. Green, right, dumping into uh, Jones, and he's fouled with four seconds on the clock. Shepard would be the man. That's his second, and it's a tenth foul. So Jones will get a couple of shots. Joseph Jones. 61% foul shooter coming into this game, but he's hit all three that he's tried in this one. And he'll have two. Chance to put the Aggies back on top. The game is tied at 35, and Wright will leave, and coming in will be Walker for the Aggies. Jones with one more. He's got 11 points. Four seconds to go. Pressure on the play. Bruce trying to weave his way through traffic. A running one-hander off the backboard won't go. And we have reached the end of the first half with the Aggies leading it by a score of 36 to 35. Let's go over to Jim, who is standing by on the court with Coach Gillespie. Thank you, Greg. Coach, I was at your pregame practice today, and you talked long and loud about stopping Baylor's three-point shooting. What's the story now? We can't go to the ball so far. They've done a great job running their stuff, and... Uh, we haven't done as good a job as we needed to helping 
uh, off the ball screen, uh, just in straight in, just beating us off the dribble and forcing help, and then we just got to be a little bit more sharp defensively. Well, on the offense, kind of they're making shots. Offensively, both teams playing very well, both shooting over 50%. You've got to really be happy with your big freshman, Joe Jones, who's your leading scorer so far. We're not getting the ball to him enough. It's open. I think we're being a little bit tentatively offensively. Hopefully, we'll change after the half. Okay, thanks, Billy. Good luck the second half. Greg, back to you. Thank you, Jim. We'll uh, be back uh, talking halftime uh, activities a little bit later on. We'll take a break and be back to set you up about something else from Aggie Land. Another basketball team of note. That's coming up. Stay with us. Out of gas? Yeah. Dodge Grand Caravan, the only minivan with stow and go. Another minivan first from Dodge. Daddy just had to get a motorcycle, didn't he? <laughs> Funny, huh? Grab zero plus, zero percent financing plus January bonus cash for total savings up to $7,500 on Grand Caravan. When you're digging into a honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, it's easy to get carried away. But don't forget about those fries. They've got feelings, too. Introducing the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich. Three big, crispy chicken strips with honey barbecue sauce and melted Monterey Jack on a toasted bun. What a burger! Just like you like it. Ultimate Fighting is back on Free TV. Six brutal warriors, three fierce fights. Ultimate Fighting Championship, Sunday. There's a whole new world of high-definition television to experience. And nobody takes you there like DirecTV HD. With more HD sports, more HD movies, more HD channels. With the widest variety of HD programming available, isn't it time to rethink the way you look at television? DirecTV HD. Don't give it back to him. Nice. Oh, you gotta call that. With up to 40 NBA games a week, news, stats, and highlights. Nice. NBA nice. League Pass from DirecTV is heaven. Call 1 800 Get Sports today. Watching FSN Southwest. Halftime here, Texas A&M 36, Baylor 35, in a game that is uh, shaped up as we had hoped and expected before the game. You know, there's been a great resurgence in basketball here at College Station. Look at that crowd. That's going to be more than 10,000 in the building today uh, for this uh, afternoon game against the Baylor Bears. But it's not just Billy Gillespie's team. In fact, they have a promotion, it's BGGB, and that means Billy Gillespie and Gary Blair. Gary Blair, the coach of the women's team. What a bunch of, a uh, uh, number of successes the women's team has had. And one of the reasons is the recruiting. And the recruiting has a lot of good young players. Bart Ennis has a story on the women Aggies. Like the men's basketball program at Texas A&M, the women's program is going through a rejuvenation. They've already surpassed their win total for each of the last two seasons. The most amazing thing is that true freshmen and redshirt freshmen comprise 57% of Coach Gary Blair's roster. In fact, twice this season, Blair has had five freshmen on the floor at the same time. He finds himself in the unusual position of not just helping the star-studded freshman class make the transition to playing the game at this level, but also depending on them to make major contributions. What I have to do is develop some leadership out of that. It's hard for a freshman to lead except by example. And that's what we have to have with this class. We need for them to lead by example now and hopefully next year as sophomores they can start leading a little bit more verbally. That should come easily for this group. They're all from very successful high school programs and expect to win. Just listen to Katie Pounds who won a state championship at Shallow Water High School. 
it really doesn't really matter your age as long as you have the confidence to go step out on the court, especially in Big 12, and just know that you can play your game. Finding your way in a new place on a new team all by yourself is the challenge all freshmen face. But these eight girls have discovered it's easier to handle with newfound friends. It's difficult individually, but we make it easier on each other because we all push each other up. Like when someone's down, one of the freshmen pick us up, or the upperclassmen. So we just all try to stick together and pick each other up to get through the situation. And when you're coaching teenage girls in this modern era who are making the already difficult transition from high school to college, there are going to be issues. Coach Blair is discovering that there's one small issue that has the potential to be a huge issue. The cell phone. The freshman girl, after practice, this is the first thing she's going to grab to call back to her support base, either her parents, her boyfriend, or AAU coach, or high school coach. Somebody tell me how great I was in high school because it's not coming so quickly now. But it is coming together for these girls, probably faster than the rest of the Big 12 would like to see. Well, don't forget, Fox Sports Net, FSN is your place for women's college basketball from the Big 12. Texas Tech, Texas A&M, tomorrow at 2, right here. It's 36-35. The Aggies lead the Bears. We'll be back in a moment. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot pry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. Grayford, Texas. November 23rd, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. CarMax is the best place to buy a used car. Low, no haggle prices, a huge selection, and guaranteed quality mean customers have a great car buying experience. So it's no surprise that CarMax is also a great place to work. We're proud to announce that CarMax has just been named one of Fortune's 100 best companies to work for. CarMax, the way car buying should be, and a great place to work. technology have to be so difficult? At CompUSA, we make technology easy. Easy to get, easy to use. CompUSA, you're on. The 265 horsepower Acura MDX gets hearts in the right place, even if you're not. You make memories, now you can share them. The HP Pavilion desktop with the Intel Pentium 4 processor starting at $499 after rebates, monitor included. Create home movies in minutes when you add a DVD burner with video editing software. Put down your marker and start burning custom labels when you upgrade your DVD burner with LightScribe, only from HP. Call now, and for a limited time, upgrade to a DVD burner with LightScribe for only $50. Next week on the Best Damn Sports Show, period, it's Super Bowl week in Jacksonville with Joe Montana and guest host Michael Strahan. Next week at 11. Well, it's as close as you can be, 1.36-35 at the half. The Aggies lead the Baylor Bears. Greg Lucas back along with uh, Jim Howler. Let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about this first half. What did you expect, or was it what you expected? Well, certainly we said early on, if Baylor hit from the perimeter, they had a chance to pull the upset here this afternoon. They did that, but we also know that the Aggies have dominated the backboards, and usually the team that wins the battle of the boards significantly wins the game. Baylor has to make some adjustments. Inside. So then our highlights will show a lot of balls from deep. Well, <laughs> Kevin Shipman and Aaron Bruce and Patrick Fields were all on fire for the Baylor Bears. The leading scorer in the game right there, Aaron Bruce, the terrific freshman guard for Baylor. 
Also, he had terrific help from Kevis Shipman, who knocked down three tray balls in the first half of action. He hit three in a row against Kansas. He's come back to hit three in a row here today. And for the Texas Aggies, the knuckleballer, A.C. Law. He's their leading scorer, tied with Joe Jones at 11 apiece. He did it in several different ways from the perimeter and on the attack on the glass. How about inside? Big Joe Jones using all 260 pounds of his wide body, staying after it for Texas A&M. He and Law lead the Aggies with 11 points apiece. Only one point separates these two clubs. We'll be back, take a look at some stats, perhaps here from the other side before the second half gets underway in just a moment. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot pry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. Grayford, Texas, November 23rd, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. This just might be my favorite sandwich, the Brahms Bacon Cheeseburger. And it's no wonder. A big one-third pound, 100% pure beef homestyle patty. Lettuce, tomato, pickles, onions, and over a full ounce of real cheese. We top it with Brahms specially seasoned hickory smoked bacon and serve it on a sesame seed bun baked fresh from Brahms Bakery. Mmm. Looks good, doesn't it? Brahms makes everything better. We took the best-selling truck ever built and gave it a Texas spear. Introducing the Ford F-150 Texas Edition. With best-in-class towing, payload, frame strength, and interior quietness. Now specially outfitted for the Lone Star State. With chrome-style running boards, six-disc in-dash CD changer, power driver's seat, and two-tone paint. All at no charge. Get it now for only $269 a month with no money down. That's no down payment. Ford is the best in Texas. Mom? Dad? How long should I wait for you? If I'm at soccer practice. What if something happens? Will you come get me? There's no reason not to have a plan in case of an emergency. Should we go to the neighbor's house? And some extremely good reasons why you should. Can you tell me? Talk to your family about what you would do in case of an emergency. For more information, visit www.ready.gov. Welcome to the Rugby Club, where you have all the action. IRB 7s, live Super 12 battles, North vs. South tours, Tri-Nations, and domestic competitions from New Zealand's NPC and South Africa's Curry Cup, with analysis and education for novice and expert alike. There's never a dull moment with Max, Viz, Brownie, Ray, and special guests galore. Be a member of the club, the Rugby Club, only on Fox Sports World, America's global sports channel. IMAX, weeknights on FSN. Aggies lead it by one. Let's go over to the Baylor side now as uh, Jim standing by with Scott Drew. Thanks, Greg. Coach, that first half was excellent execution on the offensive end. You've got to be very happy with your guard play, but you have no scoring from Swanson or Bush. <laughs> well, the good news is we got good guard play. The bad news is we got to do a better job inside. I think that's evident in the rebounding. And for our team, it's critical. If we rebound, we usually are very competitive. If we don't, it's a long night for the Bears. That was going to bring me to my next question. They out-rebounded you by 11 in the first half. What adjustments can you make to cut well, that? Well, we can't get anybody bigger, stronger, or taller. So hopefully we can do a better job and get the spots and try to make them get some over the back balls. Okay, Scott, thanks for stopping by. Good luck this second half. Greg, back to you. And we'll be taking a look at the whole second half and all the action coming up. The Aggies lead by one. It's halftime at College Station. Thinking about selling your car? Come to CarMax before you go anywhere else. We'll give you a free written appraisal of your car, good for seven days or 300 miles, whether you buy a car from us or not. CarMax, the way car buying should be. We'll be right back. Come on down to... CarMax.com makes car shopping quick and easy. With actual prices, photos, and details on over 20,000 cars nationwide, you can search for cars without missing a play. CarMax, the way car buying Let's should be.
does technology have to be so difficult? At CompUSA, we make technology easy. Easy to get, easy to use. CompUSA, you're on. The 2005 Accord from Honda. When you consider the Accord was rated the best overall value in its class, and given the fact it also has the lowest depreciation in its class, there's really only one thing left to say. Our sentiments exactly. The 2005 Accord from Honda. Now you can lease an Accord LX sedan for $219 a month. Aggies lead it by one. Let's take a look at the stats. And as uh, Jim was talking about with uh, Scott Drew, the numbers are very interesting. Baylor shot better, but they rebounded almost not at all. And the Aggies got the inside game with the 10 uh, second uh, chance points, but it's a one point game. Well, you've got to give Baylor a lot of credit. They've done many, many things well. First and foremost, you go on the road. That helps your cause a great deal. And Aaron Bruce has done a terrific job of leading the way for Baylor in this contest. Bears get the basketball to start the second half. Baylor, if you've just joined us, wearing the black uniform. The Aggies wearing the white, the home uniforms. And Bruce saves it to Bush. And then uh, Bruce gets it back. Bruce has the basketball guarded closely by Law. Looking on the shot clock. Tries to swing it across. Finds Swanson. Swanson with a one-hander. Leaves it short. And the rebound down to Jones. Well, the defensive intensity by Texas A&M right then was very significantly more intense than in the first half. Casey Baylor, Law brings it back. The Aggies will not give Baylor those open looks on the perimeter this half, I feel sure. Wright dumps it down into, to, uh, well, actually, a foul was called Walker, and uh, the, the foul was an interesting one because he was actually fouled from behind. They're the scoring leaders in the first half, Jones and Law on the Aggie side with uh, Bruce, the big man. Shipman with nine. Baylor once again, though, getting no, no points yeah. off the bench. Yeah, but the key here is Baylor got 30 of their 35 points from their three guards, Fields, Shipman, and Bruce. They're going to have to establish an inside presence in the second half if they want to pull the upset here this afternoon. Walker takes the inbound pass, swing back out. Kirk and swing around to right. Right cut off from going to the baseline by Bush. Well, that was a terrific job by Tim Bush cutting that left baseline off for Antoine Wright, the Aggies' leading scorer. Out there, Bush with a rebound, tied up, and the arrow is going to keep it where it is. And a nice job by Walker going tough for that offensive rebound. There's another example of what we're talking about. Texas A&M had 10 offensive rebounds in the first half with 10 put-back points. Baylor cannot allow that to happen this second 20 minutes of action. Jones has nowhere to go, and he ends up walking and turning it over. Nice job defensively by Tommy Swanson for Baylor. Moved his feet well and kept his arm straight up. Right here you see Patrick Fields doubling down on Jones after getting 11 points in the first half. Baylor will give him a little more attention. Swanson took his eyes off the ball. It pops out of bounds right in front of his bench. And a turnover gives it back to the Aggies. Still a one-point lead. Scott, <laughs> Scott Drew. Drew like, well, how, how did you do that? <laughs> he's not going to look like he's 35 years old very long <laughs> when the player uncontestedly drops the pass. Well, and then on the other end, uh, his opposite big man, Jones, takes him in. That's 13 points for him. And it's a three-point Aggie lead. Shipman around to Swanson. Now Bush. Law is really staying, trying to stay in his shirt. Because that is one key. Walker popping out on switches, but he didn't get back to Bush. Bush loses it short, and the rebound comes down to Walker. Now Baylor puts a lot of emphasis on getting back on defense. Nobody on the offensive glass for the Bears. Right, giving a little bit of room. Wants to go into Jones. Can't get it to him, so they swing it the other way. Baylor staying in their 1-1-3 matchup defensive alignment. Kirk gets a baseline move on Bush and scores. Kirk! That's his first two points of the game. Nice job by the freshman there attacking. I'm sure Billy Gillespie said we must be the aggressor. Let's get after it early this second half. No doubt they followed the coach's instructions. And a 30-second timeout called by Baylor to kind of slow things down because this is much like the start of the first half. First seven points of the game were scored by the Aggies. 
Yes, Baylor got down nine to two early in this game. Now there's the real veteran of Texas Aggie basketball, the all-time winningest coach in the history of the Southwest Conference, Shelby Metcalf. He has the most wins of any first-year coach in Aggie history, 18. Billy Gillespie already has 13 here with, what, uh, 10 conference games left. So yeah. certainly he has a chance to break that mark set by Shelby Metcalf, who won many conference championships as the head man of the Texas Aggies. Oh, he had some great moments. There were some big, big wins during the uh, Shelby Metcalf years. All Playing, of those, uh, of course, in G. Raleigh White G. Coliseum. G. Raleigh White. This is one of Billy Gillespie's great wins. Remember this one? <laughs> well, you and I were here. It wasn't very long ago, was it? Great intensity in this building that night. As Texas went down by 11 to the Aggies. Certainly, Aggies, uh, Aggies were effective in many ways that night. And so was the student body as, as they mobbed the maroon and white after that, the game. That was back on the 12th, Wednesday the 12th. And that was a sellout crowd of 12,811, which is the largest this building has had. And while we won't have that many here today, we've got a huge crowd again as the Aggies basketball team has been found. Back both teams, women's team, we talked about at halftime. And the thing that impresses me the most, Jim, we've been coming here a lot of years, but the student section to our left in the end uh, never, ever was this big in the past. Well, and the student section has been sold out virtually every game here at Reed Arena this year. And Coach Billy Gillespie, has made a strong point of trying to get the student body involved and letting them know how important they were and would be to the effectiveness of the Aggie team. Steal by Wright, he gets it back, finds Jones. Jones from the foul line, leaves it just a little bit short, but Wright gets the rebound. Now there's another offensive rebound for Texas A&M, just continuing to dominate the boards. A&M is the second leading rebounding team in the conference. Baylor is at the bottom at number 12. They just do not have the size and physical strength to pound the boards like many big 12 teams do. Lob to Jones, and the weak side was late. Jones gets the basket. He has 15. And the lead is up to seven. And again, the most it's been was eight. That was the first half, twice. The Aggies jumped out to a nine to two lead early in the contest. Baylor fought back and took the lead. Well, they scored the first seven points of the game. They've scored the first six of the second half, and they're going to get the ball back on the turnover. Now, there's two turnovers in a row for Baylor on their last two possessions. Take a look at the... Watch Joe Jones right there. Look at that. Getting that position and holding it. You get the lob pass inside to him. That youngster is mature beyond his years. Just a freshman from a Class A school, Norman G. Texas very near College Station. Now he's a terrific talent. He's going to get better and better. Five double-doubles on the year, including one against the sixth-ranked Texas Longhorns when they defeated them, as we showed you a while ago. Now there's only two rebounds from another one today. He has 15 points and eight rebounds. 16.35 to go on the ball game. 42-35, Texas A&M. Now, a lot was made, the Aggies are 13 and four, and a lot was made about their early season schedule, which was quite weak. But there's something to be said about developing confidence because they have it now, and here's a basket by Wright. Well, Aggies executing flawlessly now in the early minutes of the second half. Baylor has not scored this half. Texas A&M has scored nine. Bush trying to make a move. Can't get it out to Shipman. Shipman wanted Shipman to set a screen. Now Bush. Fields was trying to post. That was not a pretty uh, good number. As uh, Bush moves it through, but he's going to be called for an offensive foul. We said it early on. Walker is the leading man on the Texas A&M team in drawing charges. Draws his second charge of the afternoon here this afternoon as he stepped in front of the Bush penetration. We got a timeout as the Aggie crowd is pumping it, as they say. 44-35, the Aggies lead it with 15.47 to go in the second half. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot pry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. 
Grayford, Texas, November 23, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. Dealers starting the year off big with zero plus. Grab Ram 1500 to get zero percent financing plus bonus cash of two thousand dollars for total savings up to seventy one hundred dollars. That includes the Lone Star Edition with big twenty inch wheels and big power thanks to an available three hundred and forty five horsepower Hemi, making it the most powerful truck in its class. Grab zero plus only at your Texas Dodge dealer. Football is your inside source for all pro and college gridiron news. The hardest hitting football show in the biz. Patrick O'Neill and our insider Jay Glazer break all the stories before anyone else. When I first broke it, people were telling me, yes, this is going to cause such a heated debate. We'll take you inside the huddle and behind the scenes for all the pigskin action. Totally Football, weeknights on FSN. Reveille <laughs> has a new fan. 44-35. First eight points have all gone to the Aggies. Here's how they've done it. Well, Dominique Kirk there on the quick penetration on the left. Joe Jones adding to his game leading 15 point total. Aggies hurt the Baylor Bears inside and out. Antoine Wright right there on the last of the Aggies eight straight points to start this second half of action. And the impressive thing too is the maturity shown by guys like Antoine Wright, AC Law. They haven't scored any of them. They're 10-0, they're 10-0 run uh, since the last basket of the half. They, that's how they've melded into becoming a team and a big reason they're 13 and four. Well, Baylor's gonna try to disrupt the tempo the Aggies have established in this second half going 2-2-1 in a trapping situation. Sure, they will fall back in their 1-1-3 matchup alignment. Bruce knocked it away. Didn't get to it. And now Swanson will come back in. Shepard will leave. We said early on, Coach Scott Drew determined that if he's going to keep his players on the floor, they've got to play a zone defense with only six scholarship players. Obviously, they're limited in manpower. When you play the zone, you give up the defensive rebounding position that you have in a man-to-man. -man. That is why Texas A&M is doing such a great job of attacking the offensive boards and hurting the Baylor Bears greatly in that phase of the game. It also explains one of the reasons why when you're throwing out the statistics about them being one of the weakest rebounding teams, that's why it's been that way all year. In large Jones, Law dumps it off, right for three. Back lift, rebound to Bush. Well, Aaron Bruce was fantastic in the first half. Well, that'll foul call to Law. He thought he had a clean snatch of that ball and knock it away. But I think they call that on Antoine Right, Mike, I'm Greg. sorry, yeah. right. That's his second. He thought he had it. But it'll be inbounded on the side by Baylor after they wipe the... Uh, Perspiration off the court. Personal fouls in the first half of action were very even. Baylor with uh, 12, Texas A&M with 11. It didn't start out that way because remember Baylor got into the one and one after less than four minutes had been played or less than six minutes had been played. Now we've got a change. Leach will come in and every place right. Leach had a great game off the bench. Nine points in the first half. There's been a great differential in free throw accuracy too. Baylor only two out of six. Texas a and eight out of nine. Bruce, Bruce Short and a very seriously hard foul by Walker. Nice job by Patrick Fields holding his position to get the offensive rebound. One of the few, Baylor only had four offensive retrievals in the first half. Fields getting their first one of the second half here. He had one out of two in the first half. The foul line, he had seven points. And he's got two. This will be a chance for Baylor to score their first points in the second half. We played almost five minutes. We mentioned earlier, Baylor in Big 12 Conference plays third in the league, hitting 75% of their free throws, but that just makes them three out of seven here this afternoon. And the rebound 
Taken down by Leach. Here comes uh, the Aggies. Leach swings it around to Law. Double screen inside for Jones to get to the ball. Couldn't do it. Walker just did not have quite tall enough to pull down the rebound. And it comes off the Baylor. Well, Walker set a great screen to free up Jones on that offensive opportunity. Bush has it knocked away by Jones, and Jones will be called for the foul. The aggressiveness of this ball game continues. Both of these young coaches emphasize in-your-face tough defense and offensive aggressiveness going to the bucket. That is their personality. Scott Drew there, possibly the youngest head coach in the country in his third year as a head coach, only 35 years old. Billy Gillespie in his third year as a head coach. He's 43. Bush looks off the screen. Walker has him defensively to swing out for Shipman a three. Oh, my! Well, Kevin Shipman just keeping that hot hand going. That's his fourth trade ball of the game. I'd say the Bears better get it to him as often as possible. Well, his career high, 15 points. He's got 12 with 14 minutes to go. Leach swings it around to Law. Those 15 points weren't in a hostile Big 12 arena, though. Quite a show he's putting on here this afternoon. And Jones with a muscle. Well, yeah, that's just strength right there. Much bigger and stronger than the Tommy Swanson of Baylor. Jones doing his thing. That's his 17th point now. Nine rebounds. Bruce slides down the lane, has the ball knocked loose and out of bounds. It will be still Baylor's basketball. Boy, he took a, well, what he a, took a hit. What a great competitor he is. He had 23 against Kansas on Wednesday night. Many of them squandered in that fashion right there, just going hard to the bucket right there he was hit in the face hit in the hip but no foul was called yeah but as we pointed out on an earlier Baylor telecast he's tough he comes from a tough family two uncles played Australian rules professional football that's tough well, we know he certainly is nice pass Bush by block by Ponte three pointer there's a tough guy Aaron Bruce with his first basket in the second half and it's 46-42. Aaron Bruce and Joe Jones both have 17 to lead the way here this afternoon. No give up in this Baylor team. Cut that margin down to four now. All around the Leach. Leach looking in, goes back out the law. Just think, these two teams were picked 11th and 12th in the preseason polls. The way these teams play to him, playing here this afternoon shows you how great this Big 12 conference is. Law just threw it up, picked off by Jones, followed by Pompey, can't get it, and finally a rebound, and maybe Pompey on the back. Well, Bruce did a good job of getting position, not Bruce, but Tim Bush, getting inside position and holding it there. Aggie's coming over his back as A.C. Law made the flip attempt. By the way, Jones is, uh, is into his double-double. He had his 10th rebound on that little series. Tom now. Pompey <laughs> drew that foul for, uh, for Texas A&M there. He fouled out against Texas in 11 minutes of action, so he's a very aggressive player. Law just picked up that foul. 12.53 to go, 46-42 Aggies. Baylor will retain possession. Team foul five on the Aggies. And only two so far on Baylor in this second half of action. Boy, that was rough drive to the hoop and a foul call. Patrick Fields going to the basket, and he ran into some traffic, but he'll get the shoot. Baylor continuing their aggressiveness and tacking the boards here offensively. They know Texas A&M is vulnerable to fouling. A&M leads the league in most fouls committed. Conversely to that, though, Texas A&M leads the league in most free throws attempted. Baylor this afternoon, only three out of eight. Yet three-point shooting considerably better. Now tell me this isn't a crazy game, it is, it is. It is a bit crazy. Pompey leaves. Walker has three, Wright has three. three. That was only two on Pompey, but he leaves. That's the foul situation for the Aggies individually, and he doesn't get the roll. And the rebound to Jones, that's number 11. There's A.C. Law back out to Leach. Swing around to Wright. Wright again, and uh, that'll be, I think, Walker. 
Walker on the push, Swanson hit the deck. <laughs> and he's at that four. Aggie fans are hollering flop by Swanson, but certainly uh, you can watch Walker. He's very strong. Watch right here. Watch him come across now on the screen. You'll see him right there. Boom! <laughs> and a uh, little forearm action there. Definitely a foul. Walker's a great story, as you know. He's a walk-on and worked his way in, into a starting role. Now, now Greg, excuse yeah. me for interrupting, but on the other end, Tim Bush has called for the push-off with his left hand trying to get position going to the block. Aggies inbound, 46-43, just a three-point margin. Get the middle, Brucey, get the middle! The thing about Walker, he can he can continue to play tough because he is not needed offensively. He's needed for his toughness. He only scores four points a game, so he stays in there with four fouls. He's a great role player. Coach Billy Gillespie loves him. Said he's been a big addition to this team as a walk-on. Now, he was a big scorer in his earlier life when he played at UT Dallas. Now, when you've got players on the floor like A.C. Law and Antoine Wright and Joe Jones, you don't have to score much. Leeds doesn't get it down. The rebound down to Baylor. Shipman. Shipman on the push. Oh, Bruce did not take it. Bruce does, doesn't get it. The rebound comes down to right. Well, that's a much quicker shot than Baylor usually likes. They want to slow the tempo against these teams with better depth. AC can't get it all the way down. Goes for the rebound, tied up. And this time, uh, the arrow's going to go the other way, and it'll be Baylor's basketball. And we'll take a break, cool things down, and get set for the last 11 minutes and 24 seconds of this game. The Aggies in the white, lead it by three, 46-43 over Baylor. technology have to be so difficult? At CompUSA, we make technology easy. Easy to get, easy to use. CompUSA, you're on. Now, there's a place where college never ends. Fox College Sports. The network that brings you the most comprehensive college sports coverage anywhere. With unprecedented live event coverage, coaches shows, and news from the biggest and the best of the NCAA. This is the network college sports fans always dreamed of. For more information on Fox College Sports, log on to foxcollegesports.com. TV ratings and you. As you Everything from what they eat to what they play with. So isn't it important to supervise what they watch on TV? Parental guidelines at the start of every program let you know about the content and age appropriateness of that show. So you can decide which shows are suitable for your family. And they can be used along with your V-chip. To learn more, visit this website or call the number on your screen. With TV ratings, you are in control. You're watching FSN Southwest. Aggies by three, about halfway through the second half. You know, this year you can expect the unexpected as Fox Sports brings the Super Bowl party to your house. Our guys will be in Jacksonville giving you everything you'll need to make your Super Bowl Sunday perfect with in-depth interviews and analysis, plus performances from Kelly Clarkson, the Black Eyed Peas, and more. It's the next best thing to being at the game. The Fox NFL Sunday Super Bowl 39 pregame show begins February 6th at 1 p.m. Central in high definition only on the Fox Television Network. Well, here we don't have the Super Bowl. We got a pretty super game. It's close with 11.24 to go, 46-43. A.C. Law, the fourth team, the Texas A&M Aggies, leading Aaron Bruce's Baylor Bears by that mark. Well, this Battle of the Brazos is always a great game, and certainly this one no different. Lots of intensity on the part of both ball clubs. Both teams playing very, very, very well. Both teams over 50% and field goal percent shooting. Only big difference in the game is Aggies' domination on the backboard. Bruce. Off of Shipman. Now Fields. Shipman for three. 
Finally cooled a little bit, but the rebound of A.C. Law in the corner. Well, that was not a good shot that time by Shipman. He didn't have the open look like he's had on his others. It's his first miss out of going four for his first four. A.C. Law. Wright swings it out to Leach. Cut inside to Jones, and he tried to move by Swanson. Swanson didn't really get there in time. A little bit of a Charlie horse, perhaps, or a kick in the thigh. Possibly an ankle. That's well, very impressive move around. there, though, Greg. The big freshman getting that ball in the free throw line area and putting it on the floor and taking it hard to the glass. I really like this youngster. He's going to be a big-time star before he's through here. He may have just crunched knees. Let's take a look at it. Yep, exactly. Well, he got a knee in the thigh. Yep, that's going to happen. Uh, Swanson, he got a little bruised up. That's just two good big players going after each other. There's his game so far. Joe Jones. Jones, uh, we've been, we were impressed from the first time we saw him. His size is one thing. Well, Tommy Swanson, who committed that foul, averages 14 points per game, only has two here so far this afternoon. Another plus. Leach throws it up and in over his back, figuring a foul is coming, so the basket goes home, and he'll go to free throw line. You know, Bobby Leach talks all the time about playing with Allen Iverson in his hometown of Philadelphia <laughs> in the summers. Well, Iverson has nothing on this youngster this afternoon. What a flip from behind. A true <laughs> scoop to the hoop in the trickery form for Bobby and, Leach. And, and you know what's significant with that basket? He has now scored a career high in a single game in college. That gives him 11 points. His old high was 10 a number of times, and now he'll go to the free throw line and make it a three-point He had run. his previous career high against Texas and Kansas State when he had 10 in each of those games, yeah. but played terrific here this afternoon. Only the Texas A&M team, with all these Aggies coming back and the outstanding recruiting class that Billy Gillespie had early, things are looking up at Aggieland. Bush misses a long three, and the rebound tracked down in the corner. But another three goes up, won't go. Hurt can't get it this time, and it's finally rebounded by Leach. Now Wright will slow it down for Leach. A.C. Law. Nice defensive discipline there by Hurd not to go for the great ball fake by A.C. Law. Contact down in the paint. Looks like this one will be on the... Number 40 for the Bears, Mark Shepard. Greg, I mentioned outstanding recruiting class that Billy Gillespie has coming in for Texas A&M. Baylor had one of the top-ranked recruiting classes in the signing period in November this year, the 11th-ranked class in the nation. Five youngsters coming in for Baylor. One of them from as far away as Finland, 6'10 player. And that's not counting uh, Mamadou Dien, who uh, just showed up. He won't play this year from Senegal. Now he's a seven-footer that Scott Drew lured to the largest Baptist University in the nation. That's the fourth foul on Shepard. Yeah, Dien had trouble getting out of the country at the paperwork, so he was only able to get here in time for the second semester. So he's, he's going to redshirt, and they're going to get him all squared away in school and be ready to go next year. But he is a big guy. Seven feet, 215. Probably need some weight, but they'll work on that too. I had an opportunity to watch Baylor practice yesterday as we see Antoine Wright knocking down his eighth point of the day for Texas A&M. But I'm just going to comment, I saw Mamadou Deanne practice. And he runs very well, has a nice shot. Just got to get much bigger and stronger. Has a very small frame. I'm sure in a year he will look completely different. Nine for Wright, 51-43, that back to the eight-point margin, the largest it has been at a couple of occasions for the Aggies. So Baylor has only scored eight points in the first ten and a half minutes of this second half. You just can't have droughts like that on the road and expect to win, but they got down this much in the first half and came back to go ahead. Well, this is Aggie defense that's causing it. Now, Pompey's going to be called for the foul, but what we saw there, we've rarely seen a ball going into the post in a position where someone actually has got a pretty decent shot. Bush did. Pompey was called for the foul. Now, Tim Bush only with three points. He's primarily an inside player, and Tommy Swanson only has two, so Texas A&M has done a terrific job 
on interior defense this afternoon. He gets the first of the one and one. Baylor was only four out of ten on their free throw opportunities before that one. Now five out of eleven. If he can knock this one down, they get up to the 50% mark, but that's far behind their 75% average in conference play. And they don't do that because he only hits one. Baylor bench has uh, not contributed offensively at all. They, they've been outscored 55 nothing two half games. Nothing off in this game. Now, that's not the end because she's in. But each is as well. Well, you have to remember, Baylor has suited out here this afternoon. Six scholarship players and five walk-ons. Oh, can't get it down. It's battle four and kept five, but finally taken off by the Bears. Here's Shipman. after coming from college last year by way of San Antonio J High School where he was a member of the 5A state championship team a few years back. Jones lose it short off the glass and rebound to Biggers. Biggers going to try to push. He's got Chipman up on the right one. He fires a three. This will be barely catching on. Right hand Texas A. Said that you talked about effective coaching. You keep saying these are two of the better young coaches in America. They're at ex just regardless of age. Gillespie, of course, last year had that terrific team at UTL passing that went play in the NCAA. Pepper finishes uh, as he fouls out with 749. See Billy Gillespie giving an earful. Always preaching, we've got to get tougher defensively. There's the score, 51-46, 7.49 to go in this ballgame. Dallas, Texas, August 10th, 1945. Nurses are forced to subtract 28.5 ounces from the birth weight of Gary Blair because they cannot pry the regulation size basketball out of his hands. Brayford, Texas, November 23rd, 1967. Billy Gillespie is forced by his homeroom teacher to write, I will not make my classmates run wind sprints for not playing aggressive defense at recess 300 times on a blackboard. I'm a four truck man, that's all I drive. I ain't got no boundaries, I don't compromise. And neither do Texas. That's why they made Ford F-150 their number one choice 28 years running. You can't beat number one, brother. And you can't beat this great offer from your Texas Ford dealer. Get up to 3000 cash back on a new 2005 F-150. Ford trucks are the best, hands down. To get your hands on a new F-150, head down today and find out why. Ford is the best in Texas. When you're digging into a honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich, it's easy to get carried away. But don't forget about those fries. They've got feelings, too. Introducing the Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich. Three big crispy chicken strips with honey barbecue sauce and melted Monterey Jack on a toasted bun. What the burger? Just like you like it. Well, that's a Billy Gillespie bobblehead. One guess who sponsored it. <laughs> Pretty good for your first year. They didn't have bobbleheads back when you were coaching, did they? <laughs> Here's the foul story. Swanson with four, Bush with three. Of course, Shepard already out. The Aggies have some players in a bit of problem. Walker the only one, but uh, with three and uh, just under eight minutes to go, that's not bad. Well, the big key for Baylor is keeping Tommy Swanson on the floor. They cannot compete defensively unless they have their largest body available out there, and he's in a critical 
situation right now with four. He and Bush have really done a nice job, even though Joe Jones has had his way inside. Walker on the scoreboard for the first time in this game. Aggies have to go to Oklahoma for their next game on the February 2nd. And Baylor will be going to Iowa State on the first. Greg, I understand Iowa State is up on Oklahoma right now by eight points with very little time left in that game. They're wow. playing up in Ames. That would be a shocker because Iowa State has not won a game in conference play yet. It would. Oklahoma's got great talent, as we know, but it's been an interesting uh, concept with them because they've had well, some games where they just have not looked right well, to expect. There goes uh, yep. Baylor's hopes right there. Tommy Swanson just picked up his fifth foul, and with he and Shepard both out, now Baylor will really have to scramble. Swanson yeah. has been averaging 14 points per game for Baylor, but Texas A&M did a nice job on him today. Just never could find a way to get him the ball consistently. Well, they only got two rebounds, too, and he averages about almost seven there, so they really shuttered him. And now Baylor will... Uh, now they'll probably bring in Richard Hurd, the walk-on freshman, who's 6'5", in for the 6'10", Swanson. <laughs> Swanson, Coach Scott Drew Swanson is, hasn't uh, left. He's standing on the foul line. Well, this is smart. Baylor needs a little breather right now, and this is a way to get a rest without calling a timeout. Yeah, you got you got a amount of time. Now Hurd will come in. Well, you heard Billy Gillespie say at the half they had to get the ball in more often to Joe Jones inside. You can expect to see him to go there every time now with seven and a half minutes to go. And Baylor having no one taller than 6'6 on the floor. Walter back out the law. Right for three. No, and the rebound. The bigger in the did. middle there. Five tens. <laughs> Their point guard getting the rebound. That was tiny. Fields draws a blocking foul on Law. Nice work by Patrick Fields coming off the right baseline there, taking it hard to the paint. You've got to admire the aggressiveness of all the Baylor players. They may be outmanned physically, but Certainly no hearts bigger than those of the Bears. They have a final on that Iowa State game. It was 74-66. Iowa State won. Well, that leaves Kansas as the only undefeated team left in Big 12 play. And they play Texas tonight in Lawrence, Kansas. Fields is one more. 53-47. Greg, Texas A&M certainly does not want to foul now. The only way Baylor has a chance to get back in this game is to get the clock stopped off. And a and does not want to foul like they did that time. Thing is, there's, it's only a five-point game. Only a five-point game, and uh, <laughs> Baylor's got a lot of three-point shooters on the floor. And there's plenty of time with seven minutes. Obviously, Baylor is even more shorthanded. Yeah, I mean, I'm just shocked that they haven't. Yeah, there they're trying to get it to Jones. And it's taken away. Here comes Biggers. It's a three-on-two. Lays it back to the three-point bomb. Front lip in. Aaron Bruce, and now it's even closer yet. It's a two-point basketball game. Well, that's Bruce's 20th point of the afternoon, the leading scorer in the game. He had 14 at the half. A&M's done a much better job of having a hand in his face and denying him the ball at most opportunities. But as you said, crazy things can happen in this crazy game. Law. Wow. With a little eight-footer, nice little fake as he got the defense off, and we'll see if... Well, that was smart, Greg. He backed Roscoe Biggers at 5'10 down into the paint and just turned and shot the turnaround jumper. Biggers oh. swings it over to the deep corner. Hurd will put one up and won't get it, but will almost get the rebound back, knocked out of bounds, and it went off the Aggies, so it will be Baylor's ball. Here's Baylor on one of their hoops. A good look here at Biggers taking it to the paint, kicking it outside to Aaron Bruce for another one of his patented threes, one of the leading three-point shooters in the Big 12 Conference. Fields tries to penetrate, can't look at the defense being applied. Leach is practically in the shirt as Hurd goes to the basket. It's blocked out of bounds by Jones. Leach is practically wearing Bruce's uniform. He is not leaving him. A nice job by the freshman walk-on, Richard Hurd. 
He's the stepson of assistant coach Jerome Tang for the Baylor Bears. Biggers gets himself into a double team trap, and that's knocked out of bounds. They're going to call a foul on Biggers, going for that loose ball against Walker, and it's a turnover, and it goes to the Aggies. Actually, it'll be more than that because well, Billy Gillespie likes that call. He's clapping for the striped shirt for a change. Scott Drew did not like it. I'm not yeah. sure if Walker was hit in the back there. As well, I think Biggers Scott's right. argument was earlier. Right when he thought it might have been the other guy that did the foul. I can out. assure you there's one thing consistent about basketball. No two coaches will ever agree when a foul is called. <laughs> or very rarely will they agree. Walker is at the foul line now. I told you earlier that uh, when he played at UT Dallas, came here for academic reasons, he had a game where he scored 28 points. His high as an Aggie is 12. A little older than some of the other guys. He was born in 82. He didn't play for a couple years, but he really impressed them with his grittiness, hard work. I got four straight free throws. Well, and he's Texas A&M's best free throw shooter by far. He knocks him down at a 71% clip. Coach Gillespie is not happy with his team's free throw shooting overall this year, only hitting them at 65% pace. Good teams usually are at the 70% mark or better. Now watch Leach with Bruce. Bruce tried to blow by and couldn't because Walker was in the way. That knocked him off balance, and here comes Leach with the basketball. And Leach will try to scoop it up, and that man, and it's going to count. Jones with a jam. Ball is coming off the rim, say the officials. Jones now with another basket, another rebound, and the lead is pumped back up to eight with 5.15 to play. Well, that's the second chance points we've talked about all day long. The Texas A&M is just dominating the big freshman right there, garnering his 19th point of the day. Let's take a look and see as Bobby Leach penetrates, tries to kiss it off the glass for two for himself, but Joe Jones on the putback. That was really close because that almost looked like it was still sitting on the rim. And that's probably what Scott Drew was fussing about right there. Still is. He's out on the floor pleading his case with official Gary Self. 13 rebounds is his high this year. He has 12, 19 points, 23 is high there. He has just had a great overall game. But you know what? Fans here are not surprised. He's been playing that way. This is his sixth double-double. He is really a good, solid big man. I, I like, you know, we talked about him coming from a small school, but 6'9", 260 makes up for a lot of school size. Well, he does, and he's been the, the difference here this afternoon in this ball game. We said in our feature early in this telecast that Swanson and Jones would have had a lot to do with the outcome of this game. Well, Joe Jones has 19. Tommy Swanson had two. So Jones has got the better of the inside play here today. And again, it, you know, it's fun to watch this game. You've got the great freshman for Baylor and Aaron Bruce. You've got two outstanding freshman starters for Texas A&M and Joe Jones and Dominique Kirk. So lots of talent to build around on these two teams. Notice Hurd has gotten a lot of shots since he's gotten into the game. Because that's the one man the Aggies say, well, he hardly plays. That's the guy you can lay off of, and it's paid off so far. Well, that, and that, moved it up. that was the Aggies' leading scorer right there, Antoine Wright, who only has nine points. But what a great game he's played defensively and on the boards this afternoon. Well, they get a, a couple free throws. No, that jam was after the shot, uh, after the whistle, before the shot. When you look at this Baylor lineup out there right now, 6'5", 6'5", 6'6", they have no way they can compete with a much bigger and stronger Joe Jones. Antoine Wright at 6'7", for Texas A&M at the free throw line. He plays on the perimeter. Third lead, uh, Wright is the third leading scorer in the Big 12 Conference. 17 points per game. This has not been a real good Aggie free throw shooting team, as it's been pointed out, but the risk of jinxing him here, they've not missed one in the second half. Uh, still happening. Well, both ball clubs have played well here this afternoon. Texas A&M continuing it for the full 40 minutes. This is the largest lead at 10 points, 61-51. And 
Bridges are not giving up anything easy. Shipman outside. Whoa, almost threw it away. Hurd picks it up. Bruce for three. That's on the front rim as he hits the deck after falling backwards following on the shot. And it'll go out of bounds. It'll be the Aggies basketball. Well, Baylor has no attack, obviously, inside now. They don't have a postman on the floor, so they've got to take the outside shots from the perimeter. The final score of this game will probably not be indicative how how close it has been most of the way. Less than six minutes, it was a two-point game. And now, about two minutes later, it's ten. Uh, Bobby Leach and... A.C. Law have just been great floor leaders for Texas A&M this afternoon. Both of them have played exceptionally well. Law has five assists. And 15 points. A.C. Law. Law has 15. Leach has 12. Good balance for this Texas A&M team. Antoine Wright with 11. And the big guy, Joe Jones, with 19. Bush misses a three. Fields with a rebound. Brought it down, goes up and scores. Fields. A nice ball fake by Patrick Fields right there. Gets his 13th point of the game. Fourth leading score for Baylor on the season, averaging 11 per outing. We're nearing the three-minute mark. Three minutes and 15 seconds with a 10-point Aggie lead. They're just going to play for good shots on every possession, and I think they just got one. Well, Jones couldn't get it to fall. Got another rebound and put it out. 21 now for the big fella. And that will be rebound 13. Fields, also the lead is 12, the largest. Fields says, where am I going to go with this? Well, you're not going to go anywhere. Walker picks it up. Off to Leach. Leach pushes across the court. Has to walk to right, right in traffic, no basket, offensive foul, a clear out is called on right. That was a nice job by the Baylor freshman, Richard Hurd, moving on the baseline to draw that charge. Billy Gillespie loves Antoine Wright being aggressive, taking the ball strong to the rack. We've got a timeout with 2.36 to play. It's the Aggies 65, the Baylor Bears 53. CarMax is the best place to buy a used car. Low, no-haggle prices, a huge selection, and guaranteed quality mean customers have a great car buying experience. So it's no surprise that CarMax is also a great place to work. We're proud to announce that CarMax has just been named one of Fortune's 100 best companies to work for. CarMax, the way car buying should be, and a great place to work. Don't touch me. Don't touch me again. I really hate you sometimes. I know. Why does technology have to be so difficult? At CompUSA, we make technology easy. Easy to get, easy to use. CompUSA, you're on. It's decision time for the number one high school recruit in Texas. And FSN Southwest will be the only one there when he makes it. Go Tigers, hook them horns, gig them Aggies, which will it be? Monday at 10 on your Bush Light Southwest Sports Report. Holla. It's been a hot season for shooting ace Alicia Robertson and the Lady Raiders of Texas Tech. But the Yankees' top-ranked defense could lead to crucial turnovers. Texas Tech, Texas A&M, Sunday on FSN Southwest. Crowd of 10,818 on hand for this afternoon affair between the Baylor Bears and the Texas A&M Aggies. The Aggies going for their 14th win of the year and a 14-4 and four start. And more important right now at this stage of the season, 3-4 and four in the Big 12. And this also would set a new school record for most home victories in a season. Texas A&M has never won 13 home basketball games before. And I've got a feeling if they hold on here this afternoon, they will win several more here this year. The way they play defense, second in the Big 12 Conference, they hold their opponents to an average of 59 points per game. Compare that to last year, when many of these same players average giving up 76 points per game. So quite a turnaround defensively for Texas A&M. 
This is the 190th meeting between these two schools, and you're seeing more fans in the building than have ever seen them play. Sixty-five, fifty-three. 53 The ball's in Hurd's hands a lot, isn't it? The defense is figuring that he's the guy we got to go with. Meanwhile, A.C. Law. Boy, A.C. Law using his jet quick speed right there, just blasting by the Baylor defenders. This is a Baylor team that plays with a lot of heart and soul as Aaron <laughs> Bruce continues. This is his second straight game to have 23 points. What I was going to say about this Baylor team, though, they just run oh, late yeah. in contest. You can tell they're just not moving near as quick as they were earlier. It's not a lack of desire. It's just manpower. No rest for the weary. Well, you're going to see a big difference as early as next year. Oh, yes. With this club. We've got a uh, foul, and uh, it's on fields, his second. And, and again... The hustle will still be there, but there'll be a little more talent wearing the uniform. Yeah, now this Baylor team has been a big surprise. You and I had the game in Waco when they came very close to upsetting Oklahoma, losing only by four and had a chance to win that one. So I'll just repeat my statement on the telecast. If these two teams were picked 11th and 12th in the league, this shows how strong the Big 12 Conference is from top to bottom. One more shot for Leach. Four Big 12 teams ranked this week in the nation's top 20. Edwin Green is into the game for the Aggies. Leach with uh, 13 points, a high. And again, the rest is Joseph Jones. 21 points and 13 rebounds for Jones. Fields. They didn't have to go here. Shipman backs it off. Bush, there was a foul. That, that foul was on uh, number four, Edwan Green. And Bush will get to shoot a couple. Nice job by Tim Bush, shaping up strongly on the block that time. He's the Bears' second leading scorer at 14 points, 15 points per outing. Only has six here this afternoon. Goes to free throw line, 6'6", 235. He's the uh, transfer from LSU, who's eligible after sitting out and uh, actually didn't become eligible until the second semester began, or the end of the first semester. Green leaves. Bush will have one more free throw. And it's 68-58 with a minute 21. Law, and he's fouled. Basket's going to count. Foul will be on Hurd. Law is going to have some big numbers now but when this game's over because he has scored eight points in the second half. So he's got 19 in the game, and he'll go to the free throw line. He has five assists, four rebounds. Well, this is just a case of A.C. Law using his great speed and quickness, just beating the Baylor defense down the floor. Just went right by Kevis Shipman. I'm sure those two have played against each other many times. Shipman from Dallas Lincoln High School, Law from Dallas Kimball. Shipman played on a state championship team, Lincoln. In fact, they won the mythical national championship 40 and 0 that season when they won class 4A championship. 71 58 with a minute 15. Aggie fans breathing uh, easy now. It was a one point game at the half, but they came out strong here in the second half. And in fact, how strong has it been? Four field goals, only six field goals in the second half for Baylor. Four of them in threes. They can't get anything in close. Here's the upcoming schedule for the Aggies. We said earlier they're going to be playing uh, at Oklahoma on the second. Then they've got Missouri here and Oklahoma State here. We'll have both of those games for you. And also the game against Texas at uh, Austin. The Bears' upcoming schedule at Iowa State up until tonight, uh, that looked pretty good. You know, Iowa State with a win over Oklahoma, so you're saying, oh, well, that may be a little tougher yet. Then they've got Oklahoma State here, uh, or I should say in Waco, and then uh, at Texas Tech, and then uh, Nebraska. That game will be an FSN telecast, also the Kansas State game back on the 23rd. So that's both of these clubs. 
As the Aggie tennis teams are in action today, this afternoon the men's team defeated Trinity and are currently taking on Texas A&M Corpus Christi. More to tell you about. We, we talked about this earlier, but you football fans, this is a very big note. Southwest Sports Report kicks off National Signing Day coverage Monday night when Martellus Bennett, one of the nation's top recruits, is going to announce his commitment at 10 on the Bush Light Southwest Sports Report right here on FSN. Then Tuesday night, you can join Inside Southwest Recruiting as they preview National Signing Day, and they'll wrap it all up Wednesday night at 6 with the Signing Day wrap-up show. And after that, all those guys have to report to their new colleges, and they better do good. The coaches will still yell at them. I can assure you that is true. <laughs> <laughs> they're not good anymore when they're a freshman at their college of choice. Bruce throws one up in heavy traffic, and the rebound comes down to AC Law. And Bobby Leach is fouled by Bruce. We have 54 ticks left in this contest. Bobby Leach continuing his aggressive play. Leach at the free throw line. Brian Pryor, the senior from Round Rock, is in the Baylor lineup. And one more shot for Leach. What a game he has had. I, I guess if we had to give a star of the game, you'd have to go with Joseph Jones, but number two would be Leach. Now he and Leach, Ace outstanding on the perimeter for Texas A&M. They, they've been difference makers, but the big difference was the contribution of Joe Jones inside. Bruce gives it off to Bush. Now just look at this. It, 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 yeah, how no little post. time they've left. Look a, at that defense. They've got a five-man roll going on outside because there's no post players left <laughs> after both of Baylor's inside youngsters, Mark Shepard and Tommy Swanson, fouled out with about six minutes left in the contest. And uh, A.C. Wright just, what the heck, I let his foul out. Or, Ant, or I should say Ant, uh, Antoine Wright. Uh, Antoine finishes with... It looks like 11-11. Good rebounding game for him. He also had three assists, so yeah. a double-double. Well, a nice double-double, but I was really impressed with his defensive intensity. He's, he's become a new player this year under the direction of Coach Billy Gillespie. Plays hard now on both ends of the floor. I don't blame Coach Gillespie and his entire staff for patting that young man on the back as he returns to the bench. Kenneth White will come into the game. Now, Kenneth White was a highly recruited youngster from Molina High School out of Dallas last year. Bruce has uh, three field goals in the second half. Now they're all three-pointers, but his percentage of field goals uh, is not uh, for 20. And, and actually only four for 10 from three-point range, but... Well, he now has 24 points, One more. 14 in the first half, and now he sets a season high. That's his uh, season and career high at Baylor, 25 as a freshman. Not bad at Aggie Land. No. Nope. And we got another whistle. Fouls number two, Ryan Pryor is first. It's the first foul on Pryor. You know, this has been a terrific ball game, a fun one to watch. Lots of trips now to the free throw line as kind of diminish the effectiveness of the flow of this game that was outstanding for a long time. Yeah, in other words, it's less fun right now. <laughs> You're right. exactly right. As AC Law continues to pad his numbers now. That's 21 points for him. Real balance, 21 points, five assists. And now uh, the Aggies will bring Justin Lowe, a sophomore from Caldwell, Texas, into the game for A.C. Law. Yeah, Justin Lowe right down the road at Caldwell. He's a terrific outside shooter. 73-60, 30 seconds to go. Well, you can see Texas A&M still playing that tight defense. And uh, I'll tell you what, Aaron Bruce still working, still working, 27 points with 18 seconds. Well, there's no give, give up in Aaron Bruce. Very aggressive, fiery youngster. He'll be around for a long time for Big 12 fans to enjoy watching, especially if you're a Baylor Bear fan. Yeah, he uh, 
he's averaging 16 points a game. He may actually ultimately score less when they start putting more people around him. But I'll tell you what, that may, on the other hand, he may end up scoring more because they may not be able to guard him like they do now. I mean, right now, they basically say, that's the guy we got to stop, and you well, can't. I was here for Texas A&M's practice earlier this morning, and that's exactly what their coaching staff said. If you can stop Aaron Bruce or take him out of the game, you've got a much better chance for success. They didn't stop him, but the Aggies found other ways to get the job done this afternoon. Ten seconds to go, 74-62. And Bush throws it up, not there. The rebound comes down to Leach. And Leach will hopefully not get fouled. And he won't. It's over. Texas A&M wins the ball game by a final score of 74-62. Final thoughts, Jim. Well, Texas A&M showed great balance inside and out. Baylor played a terrific game. This was just a fun game to watch, indicative of Big 12 basketball this year. The Aggies 14 and 4, 3 and 4 in conference play. The Bears 9 and 8, 1 and 5 in conference play. For Jim Haller and producer Kurt Dyker and our entire crew, Greg Lucas saying so long from College Station, where once again our final score. Texas A&M 74, Baylor 62. Don't forget to join us next Saturday at 6 p.m. for our next Texas A&M telecast when the Aggies welcome the Missouri Tigers to Reed Arena. And don't forget also coming up tonight at 10, your Bush Light Southwest Sports Report with a story on everything. You've been watching coverage of NC on FSN Southwest. Did you get what you wanted for your birthday? Yeah, I guess. <gasps> What's that? Uh, oh, you got me the Easy Jack Ultimate Cheeseburger Maker! This is so cool! Well, welcome to Jack in the Box. Can I take your order? <laughs> the Ultimate Cheeseburger is for cheeseburger purists. <laughs> cheese meat, cheese, cheese meat, and that's it. We will make we'll it make till it you order it. <laughs> Football fans, celebrate Super Sunday with a new big screen TV, thanks to FSN and Stag Chili. Just send an email to stag at foxsports.net with your name, age, address, and phone number, and you could win a Super Sunday party for you and 10 friends with a big screen TV, 10 FSN prize packs, and enough Stag Chili to last the entire bowl game. Stag Chili, boxing it up and setting you up with a new big screen TV. Stag Chili, the chili chili lovers love. You make memories, you save memories, then you share them. With the HP Pavilion Desktop powered by the Intel Pentium 4 processor, starting at $499 after rebates, monitor included. Create home movies in minutes when you upgrade to a DVD burner and movie editing software. Put away your marker and start burning custom designed silkscreen quality labels on your DVDs when you upgrade your DVD burner with Lightscribe only from HP. Show your sense of style when you choose a space saving 15 or 17 inch flat panel display. Call now and for a limited time upgrade to a DVD burner with Lightscribe for only $50. And let us help you customize your PC. The HP Pavilion Desktop with the Intel Pentium 4 processor. You have everything you need. The best damn sports show period. Weeknights on FSN. Due to the length of the previous program, we now join the following program already in progress on Fox Sports Net. You're watching NBA action on Fox Sports Net. Now we take you back into the action for a look at one of the top teams in the West, the Sacramento Kings. Let's be the starting five for your Sacramento Our team feels we can beat anybody. Now we have to go out and prove that, but there's no doubt that we have what the green to win a championship. Weber coming down the line, look at Bulls! Oh boy! Obviously this team has a talent, but uh, just go out there and play the game. 
But against Carmelo Anthony and the Nuggets, the Kings were minus the injured Chris Webber, and Denver looked to take full advantage. And the lob to Martin. Like the Nugget thought process of going inside this depleted Kings front line. Without their usual inside presence, the Kings took their game outside with Mike Bibby and Peja Stojakovic. Stojakovic about a 25-footer, good. Bibby for three. Communication when you come out on D. I got Peja, I got Bibby. Find those two players. Page and Mike combined for 45 points while rookie Kevin Martin had a career high 17 and the Kings were in control. Here's Martin. Martin puts it up and put it in the book. And that will do it. Sacramento is going to get the win here. 109 to 100. Next up was Utah. While Bibby sat out with a sore ankle, Weber was back as the Kings front court dominated the Jazz. How about that pass by your power forward? Chris Weber making it look very smooth. What a pass from Barnes to Miller. That will do it. Sacramento beats the Utah Jazz for the second time, 107 to 93. Then the Clippers came to town, and the Kings would have their hands full with Elton Brand. Yeah, the Elton Brand show is uh, on track. Boy, Elton Brand's just a monster down there. Nobody is able to challenge him at the basket. But Chris Webber answered the challenge with a season-high 36 points and 10 rebounds.